the question is, what do you do when most of your class does not do their homework? See, the reason why I couldn't get my homework done was because, well, you see, um, what had happened was, the uh, reason I don't have my homework, the reason I, uh, happen not have my homework is because, of uh, my phone broke. I actually had other things to do, like chores. My cat jumped on top of the table, and she started ripping up all my homework. And I had to wash dishes, and, um, and, uh, I had to make a YouTube video. I, like, uh, hit my head, and I, also, you know, I had got home late, so I was tired. I forgot that homework. I had to take a shower. I had to eat my dinner. Then I I fell asleep. This morning, if you didn't see it on the news, my house burned down, so. I fell into a coma for about like two weeks. I got it home. That's why I didn't turn in my homework. We had a problem in class yesterday where I had students that I assigned a project to on Wednesday that was due on Monday, and most students came in without having their project finished. And the project was simple enough to me. The project was we we're mapping our lives from birth till now in 10 events. So like what 10 events took you from birth to make you into the man that you are now? The way I explained it was, you just have to come up with something like, who was born, who died, what time did you move? What was the first time you listened to music that was actually impactful to who you were? Maybe you won a championship, maybe you lost a championship. Maybe you met your best friend, maybe you met your girlfriend, maybe you broke up with your girlfriend. Maybe your best friend started dating your girlfriend and then you had to get a new best friend. Whatever it is, just 10 moments that made you into the person you are now. And then you had to have three quotes that said something about your life. They could be from a TV show, a movie, a song, whatever, but they just had to sort of like, they had to speak to your life in some way. Now to me, this was a super easy beginning of the year project. And what it does is it allows me to do a couple of things, to connect the kid's life odyssey to the odyssey when we start reading that. It also lets me see what kind of project are you gonna hand in? What, what do you have to say about yourself? It gives me a lot of information about where kids come from, who, like what kind of things they've been through. That is all really good information, especially down the road if you know that like um, someone's mom died recently or if they had a brother that got locked up or if they won a championship in their last school. Like you get these little bits of information about kids that becomes really useful because more, the more you know about the kid, the better you can teach them and it allows you to have things like grace and empathy for a student. So I hand out this assignment Yesterday comes and almost no one has the project done in most classes, right? Some of the classes actually did a very good job. But what I noticed was that at first I get really angry, right? I get angry because I think, how could you do this in my class? How could you do this when I'm caring more about your grade than you care about your grade? How could you do this? Don't you understand that ninth grade is important? Don't you understand that colleges are going to look at these grades? And I just find myself getting so frustrated that I don't even know what to say all the time. And so I think it's important when that happens to take a step back and to wonder, is there a bigger issue here? And so what I did was I walked around, I talked to different students and I asked, why didn't you do the project? And so it turns out maybe they don't understand how to use Google Slides. Maybe they don't understand how to input pictures into Google Slides. And although they should, and although they should know, look it up on YouTube, look it up on the internet, figure out how to do it. Although I have the Remind 101 app, or although I have, uh, they could shoot me an email and ask me questions and I would have gotten right back to them. I just realized that like in the beginning of the year, I was assuming that the students knew how to do a lot more than they did. Now, did some of them know how to do things? Yes, but did all of them? Maybe not. And so that's what I was finding was that not all the students knew exactly what I was asking for. Now, I get that there's a tricky line here because you can feel like you're getting played or like someone's trying to dupe you. But to be honest, if you do that on one assignment or even five assignments, no one's gonna win for the year. Hundreds of points go into every single trimester at my school. No one's gonna win off of just one assignment. So I try not to even worry about that. And if I find out later that someone was dragging their feet or someone tried to like get one over on me and they won, then maybe they win. But like, that's not a something I'm gonna worry about in the moment. So what I did instead was this. Instead of just giving everyone a zero and starting off the school year in that way, which I very well could have done, and I could have done it for any number of reasons, but mostly because I don't do extra credit. I don't do extra time. I don't do makeup work. That is just not something that I 
feel strongly about. And I think that kids use that as a crutch too many times. But for this occasion, I made it known that for this one time, I was going to allow kids to make up this assignment. And then I had them work through it in class and really build a plan so that when they went home, they were ready to work on what they already came up with a plan for. The other thing was you could not get a hundred. You could at best get a passing grade. So you could get a 70 out of a hundred. That was the number one grade you could get because you had all these days to do it. You didn't take advantage of it. And now it's letting you make something up. And this is a big step for me. I don't usually do this kind of thing. And I, you know, but I'm learning the longer that I teach is that you have to keep fluid, that your students from last year don't necessarily represent the population that's coming in this year. They change all the time. And so sometimes your rules, your hard and fast ways need to fluctuate with those students if you want to build them up for success. Now, the next project that we have done, if no one does it, I'm chalking it. They're just taking the zero and then that L is theirs. But this time I felt like the L was partially my fault. Like maybe I didn't explain it enough. Maybe I didn't let them work through it on their own before they went home to really have an idea of what was due. And so that's just what I'm thinking about with what happened today. Look, in the comment section below, I would love to hear about how do you handle this stuff? When is the time maybe when you showed grace in the classroom or when someone showed grace for you? Or do you think the other way? Do you think hard and fast rules should stay there every single year and that's maybe benefited you? No judgment either way. I'm just trying to find out what works best for people. And this is also becomes a resource as usual. Like you leave a comment and then someone is going to be able to read through these and figure out maybe their own way of handling this situation. And that's it everybody. Peace.